Good morning, everybody. Good to see you all. Boy, right in the last couple of minutes, we went from about 15 people to 100. That's wonderful. <laughs> but you're pushing the Mexican lateness a little bit. My name is Susan McDonald. I'm a volunteer on the board, and our board wears orange name tags, although I won't wear orange today because it clashes with pink. Um, and I'm on the Sunday Service Committee with Kathy Canapa, who is ill today. She was going to take part in the service, um, but she has stayed home. Um, and Paula Peace has been a long time Sunday service coordinator. So we're all here together to say goodbye, adios, to 2023, and bienvenido to 2024. We're here in person and on Zoom together, choosing to share this, the last morning of 2023, with each other. So we're so glad you came. I'm still pretty new to this fellowship. I've been here a little over two years now. Many of you are longtime residents and longtime visitors and longtime members of the fellowship. All of us together make up quite a rich tapestry. All of our members and friends, can, we continue to evolve and we enrich the community and the community enriches us. I think we'd all agree. We're so grateful here that you're part of our lives and we're grateful to be part of yours and we encourage you to trust that you can bring your whole self here the perfect parts and the imperfect ones and we hope you find acceptance in this community of friendship and love you're needed just as you are after the service those on zoom are invited to stay connected and visit with each other in the main room for discussion those who are with us at the Aldea can join us for coffee and cookies at the back. And there will be lots of cookies, I've already noticed them. <laughs> two Sundays from now, yes, that's right, two Sundays from now on January 14th, there'll be a special event for all our January birthdays and Capricorns in general. We'll have a potluck meal following the service and a very special addition to the festivities, which I cannot announce. Nora Cohen and Don Zella, who are members here somewhere in the back, who not coincidentally have January birthdays, are the organizers of this fiesta. We hope you'll stay for the fun. Who knows, it might just be so much fun we have it every month or every quarter, but that could be a problem with our um, New Year's resolutions, I think. You'll hear more about this in the next two weeks. Um, watch for maybe a notice in the newsletter. And Nora Cohen is often at the back table around the cookies um, after the service. If you know you'd like to bring something, um, it's going to be a potluck. So if you already know you'll want to sign up, you can let her know later exactly what you will bring. But um, just talk to her. I'm not sure I got visitor cards. Is Diana here? I didn't get specific cards, but I usually I would read them out and let you know who's here. But if we have any here today, um, would you stand if you're willing to so that we can just see who you are and see what your face is like? And we can look for you during coffee hour. If you want to take a minute to stand, please do. Hi, hi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So for visitors, any, um, any of us who are wearing member name tags, hold us to it to actually talk to you and greet you and, and make you feel welcome. We do record our Sunday in-person services. You can just go to the website www.uufsma.org and click on services at the top and then um, click on previous services. While you're on the website, you can check out various events sponsored by the fellowship and information on how to become a member and even make a pledge. It's not too late, even though the year will be over soon. If you haven't pledged, we'd sure love to get it for our operating budget. Now, as we enter our sacred time together, let me just say a few words about today's service, which builds on the previous four Sundays, the whole month of December, we have focused on the idea of hope, the aspects of it, the meanings, how we and others find it, how we lose it maybe, how we experience it. 
Our service today will point us in a new direction for finding and creating hope right in the midst of our messy lives. We'll share perspectives on finding hope through our capacity to laugh at ourselves, to find humor in our circumstances. And many of us know that we would not have gotten through rough times without humor. Many of us have, will have read eons ago, in the late 70s, I think, Norman Cousins' book, Anatomy of an Illness. He wrote this very personal account about his um, painful journey with the incurable spinal condition, ankylosing spondylitis. He found that laughter had an analgesic effect, and he purposely sought it out through funny movies and just anything that could make him laugh eased his pain. Since the publication of his book, Interest in Laughter, and in humor generally as a potential therapeutic option has only grown. I looked for some interesting little tidbits to share today, but there's too many. When I Googled laughter is the best medicine, there's about a million results. So you can go do that yourself and, it's, um, and find all the funny movies you can. Suffice to say that there's a large body of scientifically supported studies that shows humor and our ability to laugh benefit us mentally, emotionally, and physically. So we'll explore that today as we enter another new year. Now we'll have our opening words. Bob Dupay will help me with lighting the chalice candle. We gather this hour as people of faith and hope. We gather with our joys and our sorrows and our gifts and needs. We light this beacon of hope as a sign of our quest for truth and meeting in celebration of the life we share. To officially welcome 2024, I'd like to share these words from Mae Sarton. Some of you might know her as an author and poet. Um, I think she has died in the past decade. Um, this particular passage became emblazoned in my psyche for some reason. It just really spoke to me 50 years ago in my 20s. And I can still recite it by memory. It was something that I would always remember to look up as the old year came to an end and a new year began. She wrote this in her Journal of a Solitude. I welcome the new year with great expectations because they are expectations that I can myself fulfill and have to do with inner life and the beauty of the world around me, I dare to say this. Peace does not mean an end to tension, the good tensions, or of struggle. It means, I think, less waste. It means being centered. Forgive me for a minute while I find my place, please. Enjoy this um, video. The lyrics will appear on your screen. This is our welcoming hymn, Let It Be a Dance. If you'd rise and join in, and we'll remain standing for the covenant after that. to 
let's join together in reading our unique UU Fellowship Covenant. And we say it's unique because this fellowship literally wrote it. It's not a doctrine of a large global church denomination. Each UU congregation and fellowship has its own. We respect the interdependent web of life and work for a just and peaceful world. We encourage the search for truth and meaning, strive for compassion in our relationships, and seek values that will benefit our lives and the lives of others. This is our covenant. Respetamos todos los estilos de vida dentro de su red interdependiente y trabajamos por un mundo justo y pacífico. Alentamos la búsqueda de la verdad y la comprensión total. Nos esforzamos por mantener compasión en nuestras relaciones y buscamos valores que beneficien nuestras vidas y las vidas de los demás. Este es nuestro convenio. Thank you very much. It's great to practice our Spanish, isn't it? So take a nice, relaxing breath as we begin a special time in our service. As a loving community, every week, we name those in our hearts and minds. And for each joy or concern, we light a candle, indicating that that thought, that person, is held by all of us here together and on Zoom. If you have a joy or concern you'd like to share in a future service, you can email Reverend Rosiello during the week to be on the list, or write something on a card, index card, as you come in for the service each Sunday, and we'll try to make sure we get that up here to the um, service leader. You can type it in the Zoom if you have something pressing on your heart today, and we'll have somebody watch for that to show up. So we have a couple of joys, and uh, let me share those. We have a candle of joy for Jim Chase's birthday. Happy birthday, Jim. <laughs> and we have another for Deanna Amaya's birthday. She's usually here at service. Her birthday's tomorrow. Happy birthday to Deanna. She's our indispensable person. We all ran around like crazy trying to fill her shoes today. Um, she's on vacation. Raven would like to just lift up that she's thrilled that she made it through the year. Yes, Raven. A, <laughs> and we'll congratulate every, all, of our, all of us. Um, we have a few concerns, as always. Ellen's brother fell this week and is now convale convalescing in the ICU. Not sure of Ellen's last name. Okay. Hi, Ellen. Thank you for letting us know. Our first candle of love and sadness for the death of Judy Rosenthal, who so many of you knew for years. Judy passed away this week after a courageous battle with cancer, supported by her devoted husband, George. A memorial is being planned to celebrate her remarkable life here in San Miguel and before she got here, and we'll be informed when it's scheduled. Condolences can be sent to George. Um, this isn't going to help you because I would read it, but it won't help. ghedgepath3 at gmail.com. We'll make sure that's made available to people if they would like to use that. A special candle of memory for Cynthia Klaus's former husband of 27 years and the father of her two children. I think they're here today, is that true? Yes, they're in the back. Her husband um, was Suresh Meswani. Her, her, uh, they have two children together, Ajay Meswani of Helsinki, Finland. And he's here today with Cynthia along with his wife, Rita Lovanen Meswani. Did I do justice? 
and uh, they have a daughter, Sujata Maswani of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He died in July in Texas. There was no memorial service for Suresh, so Cynthia, being a longtime member, wanted to light a candle here in his memory, along with her son, Ajay, who could, who's here with her today. We also light a candle of caring and support for all of those in the midst of ongoing medical treatments. And of course, uh, we know who we are and who those friends are who are facing those challenges. We light a candle of support for all those for whom the holidays are a difficult time. And cries of Happy New Year are challenging for them, often painful. Outside our community, we light a red candle representing the horrible suffering of innocents in the Middle East over the past two months and years, actually, decades. The Israeli civilians killed and taken hostage on October 7th and the ongoing humanitarian horror being suffered by thousands and thousands of Palestinian civilians. And as we have been doing for, I think it's nearly two years now, our blue and yellow candle for the relentless burden and suffering of all civilians and soldiers in the ongoing war in Ukraine. We hold everyone here and others with compassion and care. During the following music, you may come forward to silently light a candle of joy or concern. You can come down the center aisle. Bob and I will hand the first person a candle and feel free to light one of the tea candles. Thank you. 
Good morning. I'm now going to, I'm now going to become tall. My friends took a picture of me like this so they could see me <laughs> as a tall woman. My name is Diane Daly, and I'm a member, longtime member of this fellowship and a member of the board. Our theme today for the new year is hope. And like you, I have many hopes for me, for my family, for my friends, and for this fellowship. I also have global and national hopes. I hope the horrendous carnage in the Mideast will end soon, and we will find relief and a peaceful solution. I also hope for peace between Russia and the Ukraine. I hope for dramatic changes in the way we treat our Mother Earth to avert planetary disaster. And I passionately, forgive me, I'm gonna say something political, I passionately have a desire that the election in the United States will preserve democracy. We hope for these solutions and many more. But what, can, what do we do? What can we do? We read, we discuss, we study. We, we like candles, we pray, we contribute money to important causes, and we volunteer if we can, and we hope. I don't believe that the human heart and soul was designed to handle all this worry and all this passion. We can become world weary from too much compassion, and it can lead us to a hopelessness and a cynicism. For me, humor is a great ally and great friend, an antidote to pain that can, can envelop us when we deal with all of our own problems and the problems in the world. Plato was wary of humor, while Aristotle accepted it and saw it as a virtue. One of my favorite Unitarians, Charles Dickens, said, there is nothing in the world as irresistibly contagious as laughter and good humor. Norman Cousins writes of laughter as a metaphor for the full express range of positive emotions. And Susan already talked about him quite a bit, so I won't add to it. Proverbs 17.22 suggests a merry heart does good like medicine, and many medical researchers agree. Laughter is associated with hope and will to live. It reduces stress, and it increases endorphins. It opens creativity. Humor encourages us not to be uptight. It allows us to poke fun at ourselves, and I have to say, and others, kindly, and keep our egos in check, which then allows us to get along be better with others. You use have been the source of much satire and amusement. Do you remember Garrison Keillor on Prairie Home Radio Show? I remember one time he talked about the Ku Klux Klan burning a cross on a Unitarian lawn. Um, Lenny Bruce told the same joke, and I don't know which one told the joke first, but there are a lot of jokes about our love of questioning, and I have a few with me. Unitarian Universalism is where you go to get your answers questioned. <laughs> A UU faces all questions with an open mouth. 
Unitarian sacraments are doubt, argument, and voting. <laughs> and I like her bumper stickers. Honk if you're not sure. <laughs> Another bumper sticker is the answer is to question. Our liberal philosophy and political correctness is another source of merriment for others. You use think the Holy Trinity is reduce, reuse, and recycle. <laughs> they say our holy book is Robert's Rules of Order. <laughs> you are a Unitarian if you think a holy day of obligation is your turn to do coffee. <laughs> and in this congregation, I'd say, or bring cookies. I think most of us have experienced a dark night of the soul. We may have even survived more than one. I had mine more than 50 years ago. I was 30, newly divorced, in a new city where I knew no one. My two little boys, three and seven, were reeling from the changes and counting on me. I had a new job, and did I mention the city was Seattle, and that summer was turning to fall, and that I discovered seasonal affective disorder before it was even named? And then my beloved dad died. My dad had a great sense of humor. I, I remembered how he used to sit in his chair and watch Jack Parr, Steve Allen, Dick Cavett, Johnny Carson. This was over the years, of course. While my mom sat and sewed. And our whole family listened to comedy records and hooted and hollered with laughter. So during one of those dark, dreary, rainy days in Seattle, I went to the used record store on the Ave, and I bought records, and things started to turn around. My sons and I listened and laughed. Norman Cousins hadn't gotten sick yet, but we three were discovering the universal power of humor to change your perspective, your being, and to heal. You start to feel hopeful when you laugh. Depression weakens in the face of humor. Everything doesn't turn out hunky-dory right away, but humor and laughter strengthen our resilience for life. Since that time, I have used humor in both good and difficult times. I hope that 2024 is a very good year for you. I hope you reduce reuse and recycle. I hope you'll be a strong warrior for social justice. I hope compassion and kindness will become your second nature. I hope you honor the good things that humor and hope do for you. And practice. Practice laughing every day and you will have a blessed year. Thank you. And, and now, please give a warm welcome to Liz Gatala and Kath Oshira, who will provide uh, reflections in a much more animated way. in black because I am your shadow. Oh. I hold all the 
parts of you that you have denied. And I have to live in this deep, dark basement of the unconscious. And sister, it is so boring in here. Oh. To amuse myself, I make up movies, the movies of your dreams. And here's my favorite one. I know you know this dream. You have to take an examination in order to graduate. And you go into the examination room, but you can't find it. And you're looking, and you're looking, and you're frantic. And, and finally, you're in the room. But then you know, you don't know any of the answers on the test. I just and you wake up in a cold sweat. Oh, I hate that one. I didn't, you're the bad person who's giving me that bad dream. I hate it, I hate it. I hate it. It's my all-time favorite. Oh. Never giving it up. But, you know, I'm always looking for ways to have more fun in this dungeon. So, I looked around, and you know what I found? No. There's Wi-Fi down here. Oh. Who knew? I mean... Sister, you are connected to the world wide web of the collective unconscious. Me? Yeah. And I signed up for a Zoom class. It's called Shadow Therapy 101. Oh. And I learned so much. But the first thing I learned, and the most important thing I learned, is that I, the shadow, am valuable. You need me. Because with all the doubt and fear and all the shit down here, there's just got to be ponies in here somewhere. Well, for what thing? I have no doubt or fear. I am. Everything is just jolly good. And I don't. But you mentioned um, ponies. You know, I just love ponies. How can I get ponies? Well, you know, let me tell you, sister. According to my class, uh -huh. here in the, in the unconscious, everything is symbolic. You know, the ponies, they stand for treasures. And the treasures are the good parts of you that you lost when you repress the bad parts. Oh. So in order to get those treasures, you've got to shine your light of awareness on all these bad feelings. Are you ready to shine your hope on all this doubt? Yes, I'm ready to shine my light on you. Are you ready to receive it? Yes. Shazam! Oh, God! You are powerful, girl. <sighs> what shook loose in here? There is, where did I put those ponies? I mean, those treasures. Oh, wait, here they are. Okay, what do we got? Remember, these are symbols. Symbols. What do we got here? Oh, and now I get to fly around at night. That would be fun. Don't you think, sisters, you are not the sharpest tack in the box. Oh. You know, think about it again, huh? Oh, symbol, symbol, symbol. Must be wise, else or wise, right? Hmm, wisdom. If I had wisdom, then maybe I could make the right decisions. When things became kind of complicated, I could decide, and I could decide it with wisdom. Can, can yes. I, can I take yes. it? Yes. Wisdom transforms doubt into discernment. Oh. Can you use discernment? Discernment? I actually could. Okay, thank you. You're uh, welcome. <laughs> okay. Well, what else have you got in there? Any more ponies? I mean, uh, treasures? I feel so much fear. Changes are happening so fast. I'm scared. Zap me again. Shazam! Oh, God. Okay, what do we got now? All right. Remember, these are symbols. Symbols! Oh! Show everybody the symbol. What do you think that is? I think that symbol means courage. <laughs> As lions have a lot of courage, I don't have any fear, of course. But I can always use lions because, you know, when we have to change things, you have to have courage to do it. Yes, right. courage transforms so, fear into the energy of enthusiasm. Oh, I'd like to be a little more enthusiastic. There you go. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. That's nice. Anything, anything else? 
you know, I know it now. It's not a pony, it's a treasure. You got any more? I feel so helpless. I feel like I can't do anything by myself. Zap me, please. Javert. Oh, okay. Here we go. What do we got here? Oh, Rosie the Riveter. My hero. You know, Rosie, if we had Rosie on our team, we could all work together. So, to accomplish anything this coming year, we need to have we can do it spirit. And we need to all work together, and then we can do it. Right? Yes. Rosie trans transforms that I can't do it alone feeling into we are a team. We can do it team. together. Yeah. 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 Oh my God. Oh, you want I this? want that. Oh, I want. I want. Okay. Rosie. Oh, God, I feel so much better. Oh. 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 Happy New Year! Oh. And my shadow walking down the year you street. Happy New Year! That's quite an act to follow, I, I will admit. Thank you so much. Good morning, I'm Jürgen Allers. I am a member of the Sunday Service Committee and a member of the board. Well, as you have figured out very easily by now, we have made it. It's the final day of 2023, and it's seen its share of uh, stormy weather. Uh, globally, locally, and yes, right here in our beloved community. And as you probably are aware, this is also the final day of our morning, of our uh, 23 pledge drive for 2024. Uh, the uh, Stewardship Pledge Drive is a campaign for the budget that will sustain our fellowship throughout the coming definitely promising new year. As I reflect on our fellowship on our last year, the concept of resilience comes to mind. How do I define resilience? Well, we feel. We fail. We fall, and yes, we hurt. But we keep going on, forever hopeful by learning to do better the next day, the next month, the next year. So yes, the concept of hope, which during the winter holidays headlined over the last four Sunday morning services, also comes to mind coupled with the concept of resilience. And here I'm reminded of the famed historian Howard Zinn, father-in-law of the guru, mindfulness guru, John Kabat-Zinn, when he said, hopefulness is based on the fact that human history is a history not only of cruelty, of conquest and oppression, but also of compassion, sacrifice, courage, kindness, what we choose to emphasize in this complex history will determine our lives. And if we only, if we see only the worst, then it destroys our capacity to actually do something. Well, I see our beloved UU Fellowship have capacity to do something. Our stewardship pledge campaign over the past month 
has made it crystal clear that we can, we can do the next year if we have the courage and the commitment to maximize our generosity by pledging what each of us can to keep the fellowship dynamic, strong, and growing. Our board has made the wise, wise decision not to dip into our diminishing reserve as we have in the past. For example, this last year, we dipped into the reserve to the tune of about $32,000. We won't do that again this coming year. Our ability to carry through a very promising fellowship program for 24 depends entirely on the actual total pledge amount made by all our members, all of us represented here this morning. On behalf of the Stewardship Pledge Campaign, I urge you, those of you who are here, who are present, whether on Zoom or here at the Aldea, to, do, to pledge your, your tax-deductible uh, pledge for this coming year. You can do so in all confidentiality by either filling out the pledge form over there this morning before you leave, or by going to our website, uufsma.org, and you'll see immediately at the top, Pledge for 2024. And now I invite you to give what you can in our weekly offering collection. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jorgen, that, for that wonderful, for that wonderful um, offertory and words about our pledge campaign. We invite you now to join in a song which I think many of us will recognize. It, um, the lyrics will appear at the bottom of the screen, and it's one of the wonderful Playing for Change music videos that we frequently use here. I even had something a little more interesting to say about that song. Let me see if I can find it. I think this uh, video was the first one I saw when I discovered the Playing for Change group. And it's Stand By Me by Benny King. Um, Playing for Change does such a marvelous job having musicians located all over the world playing the song at the same time, which kind of blows my mind. I'm not sure exactly how they do it. But you can remain seated and the video will play and uh, hopefully you can see the words. I think they're at the bottom of the screen so that's why we're having you stay in your seats. 
but enjoy. This song says, uh, no matter who you are, no matter where you go in your life, at some point you're going to need somebody to stand by you.
Absolutely. Thank you. I love that song and I love that video. I don't think they said the word hope or resilience or anything like that the whole time, but it makes us feel that way. When we remember we're all here in this place, wherever we are, we're all together and we can do it standing by each other. Well, I will miss Kathy, who is to be here today to share the, the closing words with me. I hope, I hope all of us who worked on this service hope you enjoy it today. And starting the new year, starting the new year with a laugh and with a lighter heart. Closing words from Anne Lamott, who many of you know. One of the many, many things she's written, almost everything, notes on hope. Life is way wilder than I'm comfortable with, way farther out, as we used to say more magnificent, more deserving of awe, and I would add more benevolent, well-meaning, kindly. Waves and particles, redwoods, poetry, this world of wonders and suffering, great crowds of helpers and humanitarians, here we are alive right now together. I worry myself sick about the melting ice caps, the escalating arms race, and the polluted air and the war as I look forward with hope to the cleansing rains, the coming spring, the warmth of, the warmth of summer, student marches. John Lennon said, everything will be okay in the end. And if it's not okay, it's not the end. <laughs> right? <laughs> And since this has always been true before, we can hope it will be again. We have all we need to come through. Against all odds, no matter what we've lost, no matter what messes we've made over time, no matter how dark the night, we offer and, and are offered kindness, soul, light, and food, which creates breath and spaciousness, which create hope sufficient unto the day. Those are wonderful words from Anne Lamott. So as we end this service, and we'll have a, a prelude, a postlude at the, of course, postlude at the end, we extinguish our chalice, candle, but we don't and can't extinguish the light that it has sent into the world today. We carry that light with us, and we hope you will carry light back out into the world as you leave here today and enjoy the new year. Thanks so much, everybody.